Big shout out to Dynamic Machine of Detroit for sponsoring this video and the channel. So in today's video, we are going to go over a strategy that you can use to rough out your jaws on your lathe if you have some sort of live tooling technology. Now the machine behind me is a mill turn. It's what it was literally made to do. But if you have live tooling, then you could do the same thing, but just a tad bit slower. You won't have the power that this thing has. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to rough out our jaws with an end mill. Now, the reason why the strategy is better, in my opinion, is because when you have a new set of jaws, the clearance diameter at the bottom of them can be so small that it can be hard to get different size boring bars in there. But with an end mill, it doesn't matter. The rigidity at a small diameter is the same at a big diameter. So really, with this macro, all you have to do is plug in two diameters and it will take care of the rest for you. It's going to continue a loop that rotates your spindle 360 degrees while moving X up every single time. So without further ado, let's get into the macro. So this right here, <laughs> so if you took the two programs from the description down below, you'll notice that there's a program 691, which is for your main jaws, and there's a program 692, which is for your sub jaws. Now, both of these pretty much work the same. So let's go over the variables that you need to change to make this work. So. There is pound 700, which is going to be your end mill size. Now in this example here, I'm using a 5 8 end mill, so I will enter in 0.625. The next variable is pound 701. Now pound 701 is going to be the finished bore size. Now in this case, I actually wanted to finish at three inch because I had three inch stock, but let's say you were using this macro to rough out your jaws, then you could put 2.990 and leave stock for a boring bar after this. Again, you don't have to finish your jaws with this method. It's totally up to you and what you want to do. Next is pound 702. This is going to be the chuck start size. You need to figure out the lowest diameter where you need to start cutting so that way you don't waste any time. Now for me, it was roughly 1.2. So what this macro is going to do is it's gonna start a diameter of 1.2 and work its way up to three inches but how's it gonna work its way up? Well, that's where the next variable comes into play here, and that's pound 703. Pound 703 is going to be how much the end mill moves up in X every revolution. So it's going to move up, do a revolution, move up, do a revolution. Now the next pound variable is pound 704. Now 704 is going to be your feed rate, and this is actually in inches per minute. I'm not gonna get there yet, but if you look down here, I actually put the formula in to convert degrees per minute two inches per minute based off the diameter that you're going to be at per whatever you program in the macro. Yes, that is what that does. We'll get to it though. The next thing is going to be pound 705. This is going to be your Z depth. Now on the main spindle, I'll have a negative number because I move negatively towards my main spindle. On my sub spindle, program 692, I'll have a positive number. And yeah, if you don't know that kind of stuff, please do not take this macro and put it into a CNC machine. So with all that, you can now bore out your jaws with an end mill. Okay, so we are gonna run this end mill right here through our jaws again, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this macro program works. So let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna see at the top of your program are just safety moves. I try to make every program that I give you guys something that no matter what you're doing, you can hit cycle start and it'll put you to a safe position. Just jog everything to a clear spot, the first thing it's gonna do is go home in X, then go home in Z, and in this case, go home in B, and then all that fun stuff. So, upper, we'll press start. Oh, the air pressure's down. I turned it down so you could hear me talk. I'll be right back. So now we will close the door because I would never, you know, rig a machine to run. First thing it's gonna do is go home in everything. Okay, so now we're at the M1. Now you can see, here, let's see if I can make the program bigger. So now you can see on the screen here that we have our macro variable, so it's going to register that. After that, it's gonna call up the C-axis with M35, and then G58 is going to be our main JAWS work coordinate. Now, I kind of recommend doing this for all setups. I make G58 my main work holding, and I make G59 my sub work holding. That way, if I ever have to work on them, the number's always stored in there, and I can just hop into it and fix something and get right back to work. I don't have to relocate anything. So that is why that's G58. Now the next thing it's going to do is call up the tool. So you're gonna to see M6 T03003. That is gonna call up that end mill right there. Now, if you're using this on a live tooling lathe, they're gonna to have to change that to like T0303 because you don't use M6 to call your tools. Now after that, you're gonna have another G28W0. 
Again, you might have to change these things depending on how your lathe is structured, but for the DNX, G28W0 is like in the middle. So right after I call up a tool, I kind of want it to go there before I swing the B axis around. Now, another code that'll be different for me versus you live tool lathe users is going to be this G400. I'm actually gonna do a video about G400 because it's really cool how easy it is to work. But what that does is, is it orientates my B axis. Now, after that, it's gonna be pretty much rinse and repeat for all of the machines out there, so let's run it. Okay, you're gonna see the B axis rotate. Look at that. Then it's gonna turn on my spindle and come flying into my start position, which is 1.2. At this point, you're gonna see the spindle is gonna start rotating pretty quickly. Now, as it gets to a bigger number in X, you're gonna see it slow down. Well, why is that? Well, that's because the bigger of a diameter that you're at, the more you're taking off per revolution. So I can't just use one feed right here. I can't just say a thousand degrees per minute because a thousand degrees per minute at a one inch diameter is a lot less stock than a thousand degrees per minute at a 10 foot diameter. So this macro is actually going to calculate the feed rate necessary to get the proper feed rate for degrees per minute at whatever diameter you're at. I'm gonna explain more of that in a second with this dry erase board. For now, let's get done milling here. Forgot how slow this is. It's a lot cooler when it's running. Like if I show you the footage that I filmed vertically, it's cool, like way better. This is just air. Like we do real work here at Dynamic, so I have to film a lot of my videos after hours. So if you appreciate this free knowledge I'm giving you, please hit that like button. Also subscribe. We put a lot of work into these videos. Even my editor is behind the camera right now, staying late, you know, for you to learn this macro that 1% of machinists will ever use. So yeah. That is how the macro will look when you run it. Now, at this point, again, you could have a boring bar come in. You could have a, a groove tool come in to relieve your jaws, but it's a lot easier than drilling and boring from the smallest size the jaws are at when you first get started. And that is my story and that is what I'm sticking to. I wanna show you now in detail how this macro actually works in the background and the control. Per usual, I cannot fit all of this onto my lovely dry erase board right here. But I did put the most important stuff on here for you. So the first thing you're going to see that's an oddball code in this macro program is G5.1Q0. Now, what does this do? Well, this turns off my look ahead. See, these new controls, they're really good at reading ahead and analyzing information, but that's a problem for when using macros. So you might get it where with how your control works, it will start reading all this while it's way up here and it will put weird information in there. I, I, I know that sounds crazy, but you'd be surprised. So before I jump into something like this, it's very common. I'll put a G5.1Q0 in there. So the machine cannot read further than this. It has to get to this position before it can continue on. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to say while 702 plus 703 is less than or equal to 701 do one. Now, what I wanted to do is, is I wanted it to do a pass and then say, okay, if I go one step further, am I going to exceed pound 701? Am I going to go above three inches? So it doesn't matter what you put in here, whatever your step over it is. It is going to look at where you're at, and then it's gonna say, if I add one more step over to it, am I going to exceed the max diameter? If those conditions are then met, it's gonna stop doing this loop and it's gonna take its finished pass. Now the finished pass is below end one, I'll show you in a second, but what is it doing during the loop? It's actually pretty cool. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna move it up pound 703, which is our step over. So each time it's gonna move up 703, while H moves 90 degrees. I didn't wanna just feed straight up and then do a circle. I wanted to feed as I turned. So I rotated the C axis 90 degrees as I moved up in X. Now this right here is actually my favorite part of this macro. This is your feed rate. So right here, we're going to take our inches per minute or millimeters per minute I don't know why I need to explain this, but these macros work in inch or metric. I don't get why people ask me for the metric version. Just use metric numbers, this will work. Anyways, so we're gonna take our inches per minute and we're gonna divide it by pound 5041 plus half our end mill, which is pound 700. So pound 700 divided by two is half our end mill. What is pound 5041? Well, come over here real quick. If I hit position, you'll see we have X, Z, C, B, Y. Now the way it works on every single control is your first axis is pound 5041, your second is pound 5042, 
your third is pound 5043, pound 5044, and pound 5045. Back to our dry erase board here. I'm going to change my feed rate per whatever diameter X is because that's what I'm looking at every time it reads this line. So it's gonna say, again, our inches per minute divided by our current X position, our diameter, plus half of our end mill times 114.5916. Now, that is just a constant. I'm pretty sure it's 360 divided by pi. That is going to get us the constant we need to multiply all this by to calculate our degrees per minute based off of what our inches per minute would be at the diameter we're working at. Now that we've input our feed rate and we've moved up a little bit in X, we need to say H of 370. Well, why not H of 360? Well, I want it to go a little bit past 360 degrees. That way it doesn't leave a little bit of a step. Ah, I just got something in my eye. Ah, all right. That way it doesn't leave a little bit of a step. I uh, go 10 degrees past 360 and then it's pretty simple. All I do is I take pound 702 and I say it equals itself plus pound 703. So now my chuck bore start position is going to equal itself plus my, its step over. So then when it hits end one, it's gonna go up here. Now 702 has had pound 703 added to it, but it's gonna check again and say, if you add it again, is it going to exceed 701? If not, run the loop again. Over and over and over until you get to the point where one more pass is gonna be all you need to take to make your jaws to size. So after the macro is over, you're gonna notice it goes to X of pound 701 minus pound 700. Now you'll notice instead of having a U on my move, I have an X. That's because what I want to do here is my finished pass. So it's going to take absolute numbers from the macro variables we assigned earlier. So it's going to take my chuck bore finish size minus my end mill, pretty much a similar line to this, but just an X, H of 90, and then it's gonna do another circle. So with the way this is written, it is going to do this size. So if you need to leave stock for a finished pass, make sure you change this to something that will leave stock for your finished pass. In my case, I didn't care. I just wanted to take test cuts on my machine. So I went to three inches, I threw my stock in there and I had a great time doing it. Yeah, that's actually everything I could think of. So is this macro something that you think you're gonna use in your shop? If so, comment down below and also let me know what types of macros you'd like me to cover in future videos. Other than that, have a good day.